Train A runs back and forth on an east-west section of railroad track. Train A's velocity, measured in meters per minute, is given by a differentiable function, v sub a of t, where time t is measured in minutes. Selected values of v sub a of t are given in the table above. A, find the average acceleration of train A over the interval. 2 is less than or equal to t, which is less than or equal to 8. Let's start with A. Find the average acceleration of train A. Okay, average acceleration. That means change of y over change of x. That means slope. Nothing to do with the derivative. So if I'm looking for the average acceleration on the interval 2 to 8, well, I'm just going to find the change of y, which is negative 120 minus 100 over the change of x, which is 8 minus 2. And that gives me, uh, let's see, negative 220 over 6 meters per minute squared. Uh, Okay, that's your average acceleration. You certainly may simplify that to 110 divided by 3 meters per minute, per minute, but you don't need to simplify. B. Do the data in the table support the conclusion that train A's velocity is negative 100 meters per minute at some time t, with 5 is less than t is less than 8? Give a reason for your answer. Well, this is one of our existence theorems, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. I think if you just think about it, if I, I know, in fact, I'm told that v sub a is um, a differentiable function, okay? So I know there's a velocity for every single time, which makes sense, <laughs> since it is a train. I'm going zero uh, meters per minute then 100 meters per minute, then 40, then changing direction, negative 120 meters per minute, negative 150 meters per minute. Well, somewhere in here, there I had to have gone past negative 100 meters per minute, right? Somewhere between on this interval, 5 to 8. If I went from 40 meters per minute to negative 120 meters per minute by the IVT, the Intermediate Value Theorem, I had to have gone negative 100 meters per second. So what I would say is v sub a of t is differentiable and therefore continuous, right? You always want to state a precondition, okay? Um, the question is asking about on the interval 5 to 8. Um, well, let's see, v sub a of 5 equals 40, v sub a of 8 is a negative 120. You can even just slide negative 100 right in between there. Negative 100 is greater than, um, whoops, I did it the wrong way, didn't I? Negative 100 is greater than negative 120 and is less than 40. So therefore, by the intermediate value theorem, the train must go negative 100 meters per minute on the interval to, sorry, 5, 8. Sorry, that was a little sloppy, but does that make sense? State the precondition. If you are forgetting, the intermediate value theorem says if I have a continuous function and I have a y value here and a y value here, then all the y values in between have to be touched. So I have a y value of negative 120. I have a y value of 40. So I had to have touched or gone by a y value of negative 100. C, at time t equals 2, Train A's position is 300 meters east of the origin station, and the train is moving to the east. Write an expression involving an integral 
that gives the position of train A in meters from the origin station at time t equals 12. Use a trapezoidal sum with three subintervals indicated by the table to approximate the position of the train at time t equals 12. C is asking for the train's position at time 12. So let's call that P of 12, the position at time 12. Um, oh, this is fundamental theorem of calculus. They gave us the position of the train at time 2. So I'm 300 meters east. And to that position, since I'm moving east, I'm going to add my change in position from 2 minutes to 12 minutes. And there it is. Fundamental theorem of calculus. My position at time 12 is my starting position, or I should say my position at time 2. This integral from 2 to 12 of the velocity gives me my change in my position from 2 to 12, otherwise known as my displacement. So this is an integral expression that gives me my position at time 12. The second part of C asks us to estimate P of 12 using a trapezoidal sum. So P of 12 is about equal to 300 plus, I'm going to use a trapezoids to estimate the signed area under this curve. Okay? They want us to use three subintervals. I'm going from 2 to 12, so one interval is going to be from 2 to 5. 5 to 8, and then 8 to 12. I strongly recommend you make a little picture here. Here's 2, sec two minutes, 5 minutes, 8 minutes, 12 minutes. Uh, I'm going 100 meters per minute, 40, uh, 8, now I'm in negative land, negative 100, and 20 and 12, negative 150. Now this is a little weird. This is going to be a little weird because your middle thing isn't going to be a trapezoid, right? Your middle thing is really going to be like two triangles. But um, you can just use the same formula, the same way we find area of the trapezoid. If you remember, it's one of the bases plus the other base divided by two. In other words, the average of the bases times the height. And the height is going to be my change in time here. So this first one right here will be 100 plus 40, my two bases divided by 2, the average of the bases, times my height, which is my change in time. So there's my first trapezoid. Okay, this is my second kind of, it's like two triangles, but if you stop and think about it, Finding, treating this like a trapezoid is really like finding the area of both of those triangles. This is obviously going to be positive area and this is negative area. But if you just follow this format, it's going to work. So this base is 40. The other base is negative 120. Finding the average of the bases, it's really weird, times my change in time. So that's my second kind of trapezoid, if you will. And then my third trapezoid, which is really a more satisfying <laughs> trapezoid, is uh, my base is, one base is 120, the other base is negative 150. Average of the base is times the difference, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so that's times 4. Okay? All right, so you throw that in a calculator, you have 300. All of those end up, I think, giving you minus 450, and that gives you negative 150. So that means your approximation for your position, so the train at time 12 minutes is approximately, approximately 150 my, uh, meters to the west, right, because I'm going to the left, of the origin station. Obviously, origin station is, is at zero. All right, that was kind of fun, I think. D. A second train, train B, travels north from the origin station. 
At time t, the velocity of train b is given by v sub b of t equals negative 5t squared plus 60t plus 25. And at time t equals 2, the train is 400 meters north of the station. Find the rate in meters per minute at which the distance between train A and train B is changing at time t equals 2. Hold on to your hats. D is a related rates problem. I love these. Okay, so related rates draw a picture. So here's origin station. Okay, here's origin station. I have train B that's traveling north. Okay, and at a velocity that they're calling V sub B. I train A at this point is going east. We know that because tra uh, my A train is has a positive velocity. So here's A. They want to know at time equals 2, how fast is this distance changing? The distance between them. So let's call that C. Okay, so C is the distance between B and A. Okay, we're going east, we're going north, so we know we have a right angle here. Remember with related rates you always want to start with coming up with an equation or a formula that relates all your relevant players. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm thinking Pythagorean theorem. So I have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That relates all of my relevant variables. A is the, is the distance from the origin to my a train. b is the distance from the origin to where my b train is. And c is the distance between a and b. Okay? They're all changing. They're all changing, right? As my a train goes, my b train goes, c, the... the it's getting bigger and bigger, right? Okay, so related rates. We write an equation. We want to see how the rates are related. So we're going to take the derivative of each piece with respect to time. So don't forget your chain rule. Derivative of a squared is 2a times dA dt. Derivative of b squared is 2b times dB dt. Derivative of c is c squared is 2c times dc dt. And I'm just going to plug in stuff I know. I'm just going to plug in stuff I know and solve for what I'm looking for. And it looks like what I'm looking for is dc dt. That's what I'm looking for. So I should be able to find everything else. Okay, let's give it a whirl. So at t equals 2, do I know my position of train A? I do. They told us that in um, part C. They said at t equals 2, A is 300 meters east. So I know that is A at this moment is 300 meters. At time equals 2, do I know dA dt? I surely do. That's from my, my graph right here, from my table. At time equals 2, train A is going 100 meters per minute. Okay, so far, so good. Okay, B. At time equals 2, do I know where B is? Well, I'm hoping they told us that. Yes, they did. They said that the train at time equals 2 is 400 meters north of the station. So I'm replacing the B with 400. DB DT. Well, they didn't tell us that, but they gave us the velocity of B at any time. That's this equation that they gave us right here. So you can grab your calculator and throw that in there and you will get 125. So if you put a 2 in there, you should get 125. Okay, 
I'm always fine. This is so fun. So now to C. Do I know C? Well, let's see. I know that B at this moment is a is uh, 400. I know A at this moment is 300. Oh, isn't that nice? A 3, 4, 5 triangle. So I know C is 500. So I just filled in everything I know. And all now I have to do is use a little algebra and solve for DC, DT. And when you do that, you should get, you should get DC, DT equals 160 meters per minute. That was a fun related rates problem. Again, we drew a picture. We came up with an equation that related all of our variables, all the players. We took the derivative with respect to time. We filled in everything we knew. Did a little bit of work to find some things. And then just used algebra to solve for dc, dt. Nice work. Mm -hmm.